Mayor Magnum does over here. We've been watching that clear view pretty much of the fire from the yeah. evening. So you got your suit. Yeah. That's even better. All right. Can everybody hear me in the back? Yep. We got a good volume today. No. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, we're having a good day today. So. So let me start with the important things. So this morning, I personally sat down with the folks that lost their residence, okay? If you were not notified by me that you lost your residence, your residence at this time is still standing, okay? So I wanted to let you know that so you can feel a little more at ease. Um, right now, we've lost a total of seven home type structures. We've lost other structures, and those may be camper trailers, barns, but for now, we don't know if those are primary residences or not, so we're still working on those. But right now, that's the number of homes that we've lost is seven. Um, you know, in the last 24 hours, we've had a lot of things going on. What I'd like to tell you, too, is that these commissioners worked very diligently in getting the Stage 3 fire ban in place. So that is in place as of now. I had deputies out last night searching for any type of campfires, anything burning. We couldn't find anyone. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that also. That's, that's a win. And I, I like to take small wins when I can get them. So the deputies will be out continually throughout the, this week and this weekend. Um, and please report anything that you see if there's if there's smoke or you see fire or just report we all know that I like to push it on anyways um, the other thing we're going to try to do today is I'm setting up pilot cars on teller one so what we're going to try to do is open up teller one to pilot cars to allow you to get back and forth on teller one I know that's been a big issue and thank you for persevering with us we don't want to keep you out of there either so what I'd like to do is that when you move to the roadblocks on Teller 1 to get to Cripple Creek, we will have a deputy that escorts the line of traffic through to the other end to get you through. I can do that for now. Um, the thing is, too, is we're still evacuated in some of those areas, in pre-evacuations. I know that you don't see as much smoke. But one thing we're worried about today is we're still in a red flag day. You can kind of feel the winds. We still have thunderstorms that build in the area. So just know as soon as I can get those, those evacuation areas back to pre-evac, then we'll get you back into those areas. I hope that would be sooner than later. But I can't tell you for sure when that's going to happen. Okay? Um, so with doing the pilot cars, we're hopeful to get you through. I'm hopeful to look at maybe Teller 11 tomorrow for the pilot cars, but that's going to be a process we're going to have to work through to make sure we can get people through there also. All right, and it depends on what the fire teams need as well. So what I want to do is turn this over to Todd and let him talk a little bit about where the fire is at for you. How's everybody doing today? Good? Me too. All right. <laughs> uh, Okay, for those of you who I may have not had the opportunity to speak to before, my name is Todd Pachoda, and I'm the incident commander um, for the Rocky Mountain Area Type 1 team that is managing both uh, the Chateau Fire and the Weston Pass Fire. So, I'm going to talk specifically today 
um, about Chateau, obviously. Um, last night we flew infrared at about 22.43, so almost 11 o'clock last night, and uh, the fire was mapped with that technology at 1,392 acres. Yep. Uh, it's hard to look at it in the day and drop, right? Those aircraft help us do that. So 1,392, we were able to show 15% containment at end of shift yesterday. So that's progress. Uh, we continued to get resources in yesterday. I believe the sheriff or somebody mentioned that we had some ideas. Sheriff helped us augment our capability with a whole bunch of folks from from uh, Teller County and some outlying counties as well who, who provided us a bunch of help. And so on behalf of the sheriff and everybody else who was involved in that, my team is grateful. And uh, we're still using them today. Um, I just got a briefing from a uh, my ops folks before I, I left to come down here and um, I don't have any big descriptors other than to say things look great. So um, that being said, we're, we're cautiously optimistic that we're going to continue to make progress but the one thing that, that tempers that optimism is due largely in part to what's sitting over our heads right now. Uh, if all that comes out of that is 40 mile an hour gusts, uh, my optimism will be much, you know, I'll, I'll have concerns. But the folks are out there working so, so hard um, to get you all back home and to get this thing contained as fast as we can. So um, we're optimistic. We have people all over the fire and uh, it looks in really good shape right now today. So the question is, is once the fire is contained, how many hours will it take before the sheriff and I have a conversation? Because I don't make that decision. <laughs> I just provide a little bit of, of input. Um, So the, the question, I'm going to get to other questions here in a minute, but this question is how long once containment is reached until we allow you back into those areas that were evacuated, correct? So here's what happens in that. If it's an area we believe that it's safe to go back into, right, then what we do is we come up with a plan to allow people back into those areas. If it's an unaffected area, so the fire has not been in that area, then you're released to go straight back into that area or those areas. Probably still on a pre-evacuation, okay? So once that's done, and I'm gonna have Cheryl uh, Decker, our county administrator, talk about that here in just a minute. She'll kinda give you some understanding of what that process is, okay? Um, so kinda moving on, I do wanna cover a few other things. If you've been evacuated, you can pick up your mail, they're holding it by name at your local post offices, okay? I know there's been some folks that haven't been able to get to the post office box, but here's where the postman doesn't go rain, sun, or shine. He doesn't get past my roadblocks either. <laughs> so they've, they've been staging all the mail at the post office, okay? So you can pick it up there. I also want to say um, this is an amazing community. Last night I went to Cripple Creek to one of the shelters. Um, I had a meal there. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing talking to the residents and seeing you know, uh, just the just the feeling of that we're going to get through this, and uh, the food was amazing. Um, there's a little company that brought their food trailer up there. They've been cooking up there. Um, I'll, I'll probably go back again. So, <laughs> that was very good. Um, the other side of it too is every time we've requested something, say it's hay for your horses, or yesterday when I released that we needed water for livestock. Um, as soon as that aired, thanks to our local networks, um, we were inundated with volunteers to drop off water for horses. 
okay? Even Karis Bible College contacted us. They gave us a $5,000 donation to purchase a stock trailer so that we could help move those big animals, okay? So pretty amazing. And I just received word on that. So uh, thank you for all the support throughout our community. Um, we're going to go to a question and answer here as soon as, as Cheryl speaks, and then I'll, we'll answer as many questions as we can. Cheryl? Okay, can you hear me? I'm not real good at this. Um, uh, I'm Cheryl Decker. I'm the county administrator, and right now I'm the de facto emergency manager, so we've been working real hard on this. Um, right when um, we got started, you lied to me. I have to talk into the mic. So don't touch the mic. That's not what you told me. Okay. All right, so I'm Cheryl Decker, administra county administrator and de facto um, emergency manager. Um, in um, emergency management, we have a bunch of um, dedicated people we've been working on how we're going to get you back into your homes safely when the time it comes and we're told that it's okay for you to go there. Um, we've developed a um, resident pass um, process and we're going to have that ava available at the community assistance center that we're setting up and it will be at um, the uh, summit the elementary school in Divide. Um, we're going to open it up tomorrow from it starts at 10 to 6. Thursday, I, th I keep thinking today's Wednesday. It's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So we're going to open it on Thursday. And um, I'll have a lot more information about it. We're still ferreting out a lot of the details. Um, there'll be pe pe people there like um, Human Services, Public Health, um, American Red Cross, Veterans, uh, CSU um, Extension. Some of the faith-based um, groups will be there. Uh, a lot of people to try to provide a lot of assistance that you, that you guys might need. Um, because you've been out, and it's especially for the damaged, um, people with damage. Uh, but if you're in a part of the damaged area, you're, you'll have to get a pass to get back in there. And we will ask you to come to the center, I, um, I identify that that's your home and that you are the resident, and we'll give you a pass to get back in, and then we'll follow how the sheriff wants to let everybody in when he allows us to let you guys all in. Right, and we're, we're estimating that process won't take you more than 10 minutes if, uh, every, as long as the internet works. <laughs> like that caveat? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and if, you're not, if, you're, if you're not the owner of the residence, but that's where you lived, we'll, we'll work that through on case-by-case -case basis, but we'll get, we'll get the documentation that we need to figure out that you are the people that are, are deserve to go back in there so we won't be stopping it. Well, Somebody's we'll in ask, the bide. We'll ask, we'll have a question answer here in just a second. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and the other thing that I had, um, um, Public Health did prepare, prepare a wildfire smoke and health. It's a little handout for the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. I put them on the table in here if you guys are interested in it. Um, it gives you some good information on what to do when the smoke is heavy. Even though if we're not getting a lot of smoke from our fire, we got a lot coming from the Fremont area or the park area. So um, if you find that helpful, let us know. If there's anything else you need, you can, you can contact any of our county offices and we'll get you what we can. So some of the questions we're going to get from this is, you know, why can't we go right to our house if it's in the affected area? And one of those is, is there's there's infrastructure needs that uh, we need to make sure are cleared up first. So there's snags in the road, there's debris, there may be a down power line. We're working with the utility companies and the and the gas companies if there's gas in there or propane companies to make sure all your all your infrastructure is good. So when you go home, you're safe. Okay, that's why. Um, any. First question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Is there a place that we can donate money to help the You know, there's nothing set up yet. Um, that's a very good question, though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Renee Bunting if she can work on that, and we'll get you the information on as soon as we can. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to remind myself to, to say these questions again. The question is is where do we donate money to those that have lost their homes? 
So what I will do is I will get with Renee Bunting. We will find out how that will be set up and what needs to be done, and then we'll release that information as soon as possible. I'm sorry? So County Road 12 is still closed at this time. Okay. So the question is, what about County Road 12? So the answer is, I'm not sure. <laughs> County Road 12 is fine right now. It still exists. There's no fire on County Road 12. Um, so it's, it, but it's still closed to through traffic. Does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> Lenny, I want 12 open too, and we'll get it as soon as we can. Yes, ma'am. When we're able to go back to our homes, uh, what happens? I mean, we were able to get in because we had medication today, and we discovered that our freezer, all the power was on. Yes, ma'am. So the freezer has thought out, the refrigerator has thought out. Yes, ma'am. So here's what's happening. Okay. We as a county. You want to talk? Okay. All right. Go ahead. This one I know. I know this one. Okay. Part of our oh. part. Of, oh. Say the question. <laughs> Old dogs are taught new tricks. The question is. Um, when you get back to your homes, if the power has been out and you had food in your freezers, food in your refrigerator, um, what what are what do we do with it? Um, we are before we release the affected area to um, that you can go home. We have a team that's going to go out there and identify where the power has been out, what's going on, and we will strategically p place dumpsters in the area so you'll be able to um, dispose of that food. We'll have public health out there. We'll have environmental health, health out there. We'll have building um, inspectors out there looking at the propane and the septic systems. We're not going to be able to tell you what you have to fix, but we'll be able to tell you if we think it's had extensive damage. And, if, and, but we'll, and we'll be able to identify if your propane tank is safe and if we need to get the gas company. Right. Then, and if it's well, but if your power's been out, we'll we're, we'll go by and look that, at that first. If your power's out, then we'll be have a dumpster. The, the question is, <laughs> even if you're not in the direct affected area, but the power's been out, I consider you affected. So that we we uh, from my team, we're looking at that, and we'll have dumpsters in the area. But and maybe you won't have as much to throw away. No. So you had a you had a question back there. Is it for them or no? for the sheriff? Good. <laughs> Repeat the question. Yes, sir. So out of the seven homes that were lost, was there anybody that you were not able to contact? Yes. As of yet. The question is, were we unable to contact any people yet on those homes? And I will tell you, yes, there's one. We have just not been able to locate. Yes, ma'am. On the pilot cars for Tower One, is there a cutoff of hours that that's available? Like someone that's working until midnight, will they still be able to come down to Tower One and have a pilot car? So the question is, what is there a time when we are going to cut off services for the pilot car? Right. What I will do is I will get with Renee Bunting and we will post the times of the pilot car. I am hopeful we can run them 24 hours a day. But it's based on manpower also. So let me work on that, and then what I will do is I will have Renee post that, those times, on both our website, social media, and um, next door. Next door. Okay. Oh, just, just one. Yes, ma'am, in the back. For the homeowner passes, is that just for the affected areas, or is it for everyone that's been evacuated? So the question is, are the passes for everyone in the affected area or outside the affected areas? Evacuated. Evacuated but unaffected. Okay, so evacuated areas. So it will be for the affected evacuated areas, okay? And affected also means if there's no power. So if we're east of Teller 1, then we don't need a homeowner pass. Yes, if you're east of Teller 1 right now, it's not an affected area. I believe the power is still on, gas is still in the area, and so it's not affected at this time. Yes? 
In the back, sir. Yeah, are you going to release the uh, section since this is such a long, skinny uh, fire, you might say? You know, like like I see the southern end has been uh, contained, but it's still, and, and I know that area since I live there. It's it's an open area. It should be easily contained. Are we going to, for those people in the southern end, like Spring Valley Drive and that kind of stuff, uh, be able to... So the question is, are we able to allow people back into areas if it's on the southern end and it's contained? So that's something I and Todd are going to discuss, but it is possible. Yes? Yes, sir? Okay, so the question is, what if you're in Park County? So the, and I'll, uh, Sheriff Wagner's in the back, so if you have a question, you can speak with him about the Park County issues. The, I will tell you though, since we have no homes affected in the, that area, we will not be releasing a, a, a resident pass for that area. The question is, is the power still on in that side? And what I, what I would ask is, what you'll need to do is speak with uh, Sheriff Wagner. I don't believe that it's been shut off in that area. Yes, ma'am. Does the power have to be on before you let us back? No, ma'am. The question is, does the power have to be on before we allow you back? Then the question is, no. It, it, we'll let you back in. Yes, sir. You know, I think it's going to be, a, the question is, is on the main entrance into High Chateau is a one-way road in. Will that affect us from releasing people in? I would just say that right now it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis, and that's something that I and Todd will probably discuss is when the time is appropriate to, can we do it? Okay, so for the affected areas. Well, I'm in the non-affected, non-affected Right. Um, and that's something I'm going to have to talk to Cheryl about, and we'll decide um, what what do we need to do for those areas versus the affected areas in that certain area. But really, if the power has been turned off, what we're saying is it's an affected area. Okay. Yep. In the very back. Yes, ma'am. It's you. I know you's general, but <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, so the question is, is can you can we tell you where the 15% containment is? And the answer is yes, I can actually show you. It's on the map inside. The second part of that question is, is um, can we tell you when that pre-evac will be lifted? Right? So I can't tell you when the pre-evac is going to be lifted at this point. I will let you know as soon as we possibly can, though. Absolutely. So the question is, again, can we get back in on Cannon Road 12 to our property? The answer is, or Park Cannon Road 100. I believe they're still closed. So at this time, there is still no entry into those areas. Okay. Yes, sir. Yep, so when you go in, thank you so much for that. The, the answer to me was <laughs> that a, an ID is required to pick up your mail at the post office when you go in. Okay, so make sure you have your ID. Thank you so much for that. I, I had forgotten. Anyone else? I thought I was almost there. Yes, sir. I can let Todd talk to that. Yeah, there, there has been yesterday, I believe. We were in the middle of taking care of one. Um, we did everything that I told you we would do. We flew single-engine air tankers. We had engine crews and hand crews on it immediately. 
and we picked that spot fire up at a half an acre. You know, and that was the one across. Uh, I can't remember. Highland Meadow, thank you. Highland Highland Meadows Road. So it looks good, but yeah, there's been a number of those. Um, but yesterday, that was really only the spot across what we believe was our containment line that we had. Uh, a couple of days ago, we, I asked if there were any spot fires in, into Park County. Yeah, there were not on IR. They did not go that far. Okay. No, there were not, and the fire is not in Park County. Right, I know that. Right. Yep. And that's based on, we don't know the ground, we didn't know where the county line was, it was just a and little... They don't way. have it marked so you can see it from the air? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a commissioner down there waving? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, in the back. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on what kind of support you have? Any air support today or... Yep. Yeah, we do. So again, um, just to kind of give you a broader picture of, of the air support that we have, I'm managing two fires. Okay, so um, there was a big air show planned over on Weston Pass today, um, and, and we've talked about uh, folks needing to prioritize assets. So over on, on uh, Weston Pass, our air attack platform is, is over there today um, trying to put in a whole bunch of retardant line. Um, we lost some of the apparatus that we needed to other priorities uh, where there was lots of significant values at risk. So over here on Chateau today, um, I have three helicopters assigned. I have two heavy helicopters, a K-Max in a sky crane and then a light helicopter for recon and bucket work if we need it. So we've been pulling from Wagner probably since about quarter to 10, 10 o'clock this morning and we're still flying uh, as we speak. Yes ma'am. Okay. So it is a question for her. <laughs> the question is her. <laughs> the plan right now is to the plan right now is to open from ten to six, but I will have that defini definitively outlined and with the flyers tomorrow. Yeah, Thursday. She meant Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> sir, in the back. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, my voice carries. Um, it's been looking to me like the fire has been kind of going back and forth over to the same ground. Yeah. And once we start hearing that there's some minor containment for novices that aren't used to this, does that mean we're starting to get a handle on it and it should move much faster as far as uh, the containment goes? The question is, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> it, it's appeared that the you know, the columns kind of go like this. And there's some little heat on the southwest side and a little bit up on the north side. So when people hear about containment, does that mean now that uh, it will go faster? Um, I hope so. That is absolutely my intent. Uh, and I hope tomorrow uh, when I talk to you all and we do our evening update tonight that will be posted on a, that I can report a whole bunch more containment. That, that's where we're all trying to get uh, again. Right. Um, but yeah, we're trying to increase that as quickly as we can. Yes, sir. Maybe for Todd, but when you talk about the evening uh, briefings you have, and then you post whatever comes out of that briefing, about what time is that? Is that nine o'clock, 10 o'clock? What is that? Then it def we try and have it posted up to all those sources that um, are interlinked and people are working really close to be consistent, 100% consistent between eight and nine. Okay. Sometimes I get stuck in a meeting, they're ready to post it, but the sheriff wouldn't approve it because he was in a meeting. So that, that's where the timeline comes gotcha. sometimes. Thanks. Eight and nine. Trevor? Is there any known cause of the fire so far? 
You know, what I can tell you right now is it's still under investigation. And I know people get tired of hearing that because I get tired of hearing that. And uh, my detectives, they're working very diligently in finding the source and finding the cause. And it just takes time, especially in an active fire zone. I won't repeat that one. Okay? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, I was going to do that, and then it got so long, I knew I wouldn't remember it. But here's what we are going to do, and here's what the question is. Can you highlight the differences between a stage two and a stage three? On our website and on the county website will be posted the adoption of the, of the stage three fire ban. Okay? A lot of that has to do with um, propane grills are not allowed for this week. Okay? Any type of, uh, and, and that's why I'd much rather you actually review that before I make myself look like a fool by trying to give you the exact language. Okay? Yes, sir. Are you guys monitoring Cedar Mountain Road off of County Road 3? So the question is, are we monitoring Cedar Mountain Road off County Road 3? Yes. Yes. On my way down, there were several people who went up there with ATVs and they had a truckload of wood on the back. Yeah. So here's what's happening. Um, we are sending uh, members from us, our posse members, which are our volunteers, to be spotters in those areas. We've also brought in extra deputies to then also be in these areas. We actually, uh, we signed an agreement with Colorado Springs Utilities to we're posting a deputy with a brush truck on Gold Camp Road to do nothing but monitor for shooting, for fires, um, and for any other type of illegal activities, okay? Because that's one of my big concerns. So we are putting deputies into 357, onto North Road, and all those areas we believe that we may find campers. We, we, and the other thing too is if you see people, tell them. You know, one of my big concerns is that, and, and we'll talk to some businesses about selling firewood in the area. And you know, I think that's a, something we should have some notices there. Yes, ma'am. So the, the, the answer to the issue is that this nice lady was in City Market today and a gentleman tried to buy wood and City Market refused to sell him firewood. Good. And I think too, and just so you know, this takes a whole community to deal with this type of issue in stopping people. I need your help identifying where those the fires are at. So if you see it or smell it, notify us immediately. You can call 911. That's perfectly fine. Um, call us. Let us know what's going on. License plate number two. Yep. If you see the cigarette come out the window, license plate numbers, and let us know right away. Yes, ma'am. Um, about the structures, I know that you said you'd be calling everybody individually, um, but if you don't have their information and say they just showed up today, um, I know you can't really say yes or no, but were there any structures out of that seven and Highland Meadows? There was a structure in Highland Meadows, yes. Yes. But here's, here's kind of what I've told folks when I've, when I've explained to them that they've lost their homes. It's not an easy thing to do. I wanted to do that person to person with them because um, I think it's my responsibility. The one thing I can tell you is that uh, I told them that I would not release the information of their house location because I, it's out of respect for them, but that they could contact anyone they wish to after the moment I told them who it was. And what I would tell you is if I didn't have to contact you on that fire or, or that your home was lost, your home is standing. Yes, sir. So here's what happens on a map. So you're going to see some different shades of color on that map. Okay, Those are for different time periods, different days. It tells you how the, the fire is grown. So what I'm told is it's, it's what's called a dirty burn. So there's portions and pieces that are fully burned, and there's there are other pieces in there that may not be burned. Okay, So just because it shows red doesn't mean it burned that exact piece of ground. It's not like pouring water in a bowl and it just covers everything. 
it, it spots within. So is it all burning? Well, it could all be still smoldering and burning because it, it has a lot of fuel. There's stuff, there's a lot of things that could cause it to continue to burn. So we're not out of the woods yet, okay? And I, and I think that's the important piece, or the important piece. We have hope. Um, I have a lot of hope. I'm having a great day today, okay? Um, but like I've told you, that good day could change. And right now, though, I, I think I'm more positive than I am not positive. So, all right, next question. Yes, sir? You know, not right now, because I have enough folks. Yep. If it gets to a certain point, I may be able to. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I was getting ready to answer her question. So. <laughs> So the, the question is, are we having any issues with horse th stealing and or pilfering of homes? No. Um, I've not taken any reports on any horse thieves in the area, nor have I taken any reports on uh, burglaries that are inside of our evacuation zones. We have had an attempted burglary on the other side of the county, but we caught him in the act. So we're good. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And, and I'll tell you, I try to contact everyone every day and shake their hands and tell them what a good job they're doing because um, I hear stories at the shelters and from folks that uh, make me tear up as well. So uh, I'm just amazed at the work the deputies have done and the firefighters have done. And let me give you a little example about uh, a fire, fireman that I thought uh, deserves a lot of credit here. So at 12.03, we actually received a 911 phone call for this fire. It was smoke. At 12.04, the four mile, four mile fire chief stayed on the radio that he was responding to the fire. So that's 20 seconds. He self-responded when he saw the smoke even before the 911 got to him. At 12.04, he wasn't on scene, but he was asking for our wildland task force because he knew it would be an issue. At 12.07, he had asked for the Cripple Creek Fire Department to respond to the High Chateau area. So he's already calling in all kinds of response. At 12.15, that man was actually on scene at that fire. Yep. So, less than 10 minutes, your response was on scene fighting that fire. And here's why that's important. That's important because the faster you can get people on scene, the more homes you can save. And I'm here to tell you the reason why you had so many homes saved of a fire of this capability, this fast, and this hot, is because you had firemen that started point protection immediately, protecting those homes, doing what was needed. So all those folks with deputies then arriving on scene, getting people out, I, under nine minutes is amazing. You know, he's been down a little bit, but he wouldn't come off the fire lines either. So he, he's had some rest. I can start to talk to him now and understand him because he's, <laughs> but he's a good man. Yeah, you have a great fire department there. So that's just one story. I've got a hundred of them and uh, I'm filing them away so I can get commendations here soon. But uh, folks, I'm gonna add, I have maybe a couple more questions and then uh, we need to get back. Yes, sir. So is it burning underground? Out of my lead. There, there are places that it is burning in the organic layer. You know, if there was enough tree, uh, grass roots, other um, shallow to medium rooted kind of kind of plants and vegetation, there's been a lot of places 
where uh, it has gotten into the organic layer and as folks are mopping up and securing the line they're having to dig a ways down uh, to be able to find you know find that sweet spot where it, it hasn't crept so yeah it has who gets a lucky last question Stephen great I see no more questions thank you folks have a great day